You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. So Bo Davis is coming back to LSU, uh, but man, he is going to have a really, really big task against uh, ahead of him here in 2024. Because, boy, LSU don't have any players, man. Uh, not at that position, anyway. The latest, uh, the draft declaration coming from uh, from Mason Smith. For those that missed it, we were going off the air on. Uh, on Tuesday when Mason Smith dropped it on his social media that he is uh, foregoing his remaining eligibility and entering the NFL draft. There's there's a few layers to this that I, that I want to discuss. Uh, first of all, and this is the most important part, I think, as we just start this conversation, because a lot of you have asked, now that LSU has hired Bo Davis, could Mason Smith withdraw? The answer simply is yes. Um, players have until January the 15th to declare for the draft. So, even if you've submitted your paperwork, you can still withdraw by that deadline. The kicker is you cannot have signed with an agent. So what I don't know is as of today, after Mason Smith made his draft de declaration on Tuesday evening, has he signed with an agent? If he has, then it's over. He has foregone the remainder of his eligibility. If Mason Smith or any player has not yet signed with an agent, then they can change their mind, even if they've uh, filed their paperwork with the league office, and they can withdraw and remain in school. So that is one thing that I do not know the answer to, and I did try to make some calls today, uh, really this afternoon after we got the Bo Davis news, uh, but I've not been able to get that answer yet. If when we do, certainly pass it along to you. But listen, when LSU hired Blake Baker, Mason Smith and Harold Perkins were on the plane to Columbia to go meet Blake Baker. And a lot of people have been in Mason's ear trying to convince him to stay for another year. They could certainly make an NIL offer for Mason Smith for another season. You got a new defensive coordinator in Blake Baker. And, I mean, I was also told today that the, the allure of Bo Davis was something LSU was pitching last week when it seemed like it was going to happen and then it didn't on Friday. I don't think it's coincidental. That's when things turned and Mason decided to declare. Now, it is fair to say that this might have been an uphill battle for LSU all along to get Mason Smith to say. And he'll talk on it eventually. And, and we'll find out what he has to say. But some guys that are that highly regarded coming out of school, high school, their intention is always to be three years into the league. I, this is an example we've we've given often, but you know, that that 2017 draft, right? The juniors from the from 20 say the, the the high school signing class of 2014, Leonard Fournette, Jamal Adams, Malachi Dupree was a five star in that class, and Malachi came in with Leonard and with Jamal, and there's no doubt that in their minds they were always going to be three years into the league, and Malachi Dupree should have stayed, like from a draft perspective should have come back to LSU and played another year but made his mind up that he was gone. Freak Johnson did the same thing. He just decided that he was gone after three years. It was always going to be the case. And so maybe that's something Mason's always had in his head. He was going to be three years and then to the NFL. Some people, I, I use the example all the time of Michael Ford. Michael Ford was a great high school running back in Louisiana. He came to LSU. He was a really good running back at LSU. He was just, he never was featured because LSU had so much talent. It was Spencer Ware and Michael Ford and Alfred Blue and Kenny Hilliard. They had so many backs that not one guy was ever just featured with 200 carries. And a lot of people wondered why, why Michael Ford left school early. Well, Michael Ford hated school. He just he would he would have rather gone to the NFL, gotten paid, and started his pro professional career and start that clock ticking toward his second contract. And and I respect that. Like everybody, when when guys make draft decisions. Everyone makes their own decision based on their own criteria. I know there's a lot of LSU fans today saying, man, Mason Smith should have come back one more year. He could have increased his draft stock. And by the way, I would love to, selfishly would love to see Mason Smith come back. And I agree with you. If he comes back and plays really well, he would boost his draft stock. And everyone that I've talked to from agents and scouts this year, all project. I get the same answer from everybody. 
He's a day three guy. He's a he, or excuse me. He's a he's a third round pick, a late day two guy, a third round pick. Well, could he come back and make himself a first rounder? Sure. But could he also come back and get injured again, or not perform well again, and 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 go undrafted? That could happen too. So there's always a risk involved, and everybody's going to make a decision that's best for them. The thing that I will push back on is, and I'm going to talk about LSU's defensive line for 2024 in a second and what the impact is here. But the thing I will always push back on is when people say, oh, he's a bust. Oh, he was a disappointment. I have such a huge problem with that. And, and I, I guess part of me intuitively, intellectually knows that you're just talking about production on the field. Uh, you're not trying to insult a young person. But my goodness, man, Mason Smith or any recruit didn't ask to be rated where they are by a, a scouting service. Mason Smith in the 247 composite was the number 20 overall player in the country. He was a five-star, he was the number one player in Louisiana, and he was the fifth best defensive lineman in the country. He didn't ask for your expectation. And no doubt nobody had a greater expectation of himself uh, of himself than Mason Smith did. But I look at Mason Smith's time, and there's a lot of reasons sometimes why careers play out the way they do. Mason Smith, as a freshman in 2021, was disruptive, wasn't he? He was really good. And by the way, in fall camp of 2022, not only was Mason Smith the best defensive player LSU had, he was the best player on the team. They could not block him in fall camp last year. I'm not guessing. I saw it with my own two eyes because Brian Kelly let us in there to watch full scrimmages and whole practices. They could not block him. He was awesome. And then on the first defensive series, he tore his ACL, and he missed his whole sophomore year. And who knows what that does? A year of recovery. Did he play hesitant? Maybe. Something we don't talk about enough is Mason Smith had a pretty severe ankle injury in fall camp this year that he played through. So you're coming off a knee injury. You injure your ankle. You got to get back into play in shape. You hadn't played a game in a calendar year. I, there's a lot of... Can we also mention the coaching turnover? I mean, he was recruited by Ed Ogeron. You know, Andre Carter was the defensive line coach at the time. And then he had Jamar Cain, then Gerald Chapman, then Jimmy Lindsey, then John Jancic, then Pete Jenkins... And now he's going to have another defensive line coach either way in 2024 if he were to come back. There's a lot of reasons why something may go the way. I, may go, uh, there's a lot of reasons why a career may go the way it does. But I just have such a problem labeling kids as busts or whatever the case may be. Mason Smith is a great physical, has great physical ability, and, and I hope he realizes. Do I wish Mason Smith had a more productive career? Do I wish he was the second coming of Glenn Dorsey? Of course I do. But I also see a guy that, that was from Terrebonne who came to LSU, stayed home, could have gone anywhere, put on the purple and gold, battled back from a, a, a torn ACL, the first time he'd ever been injured in his life, came back, stayed healthy, played this year despite the defense being atrocious, and is going to chase his dream, man. And I salute him for, him and I, uh, for it, and I wish him well. I hope it works out. I think the best comp is Al Woods. I mean, Al Woods was a five-star from a small town in Louisiana who came to LSU and didn't have the giant career. He was a fourth-round pick by the Saints who cut him. And then he just, it took him a while, but once he got his feet under him, Al Woods just finished his 14th NFL season. And Mason Smith may go on and be that guy, and I hope he is. I hope he has an awesome career if he does, in fact, stay in the draft. I hope he's a high draft pick and plays a long time and stays healthy and is super productive, and I think he has the ability to do so. But I just have a hard time criticizing. The same way I will never criticize a fan for how you spend your time or money. I tell you that all the time. People are like, oh, fans need to buy tickets and show up. Fans need to stop leaving early. I'll, you'll never hear that from me. You want to buy a ticket and use it to wipe your behind? Go ahead. It's your money. You want to come late and leave early? It's your time. Do what you want. I'm not going to criticize you because I don't want anybody telling me what to do with my time or money. It's the same here. Mason Smith's making a decision for himself, for his family, based on criteria that you and I don't know. And he's making the decision he feels is best for himself. And we'll see if he's right or wrong. But it's his decision to make. And I wish him well, man. The really, really, really tough part for LSU now. Remember, on signing day back in December, Brian Kelly was asked about the defensive line. The guy's currently here. And he was talking so much about retention. Listen to what Brian Kelly said just a few weeks ago in late December. 
the junior college player, Sean Montgomery, we really kind of satisfied that piece kind of early on before the transfer portal even got busy. So we used him as kind of the model. Like if somebody is of that caliber of a player or better, maybe we'd be interested. And we feel good about retention. We feel good about retention. Uh, Sean, he said Montgomery, he met Sean Washington, who's the junior college player that LSU signed this year. We can put that one in the file of the names that, that BK's messed up. He, that's that that's just habitual for him now. The guy really struggles to get his players' names right. But anyway, um, like, dude, just put it on a sheet of paper in front of you. Anyway, um, but you heard Brian Kelly December 20th say they feel good about retention. Remember, Fitzgerald West, Bryce Langston, Ty G. Hill all went in the portal. Jordan Jefferson's out of eligibility. Makai Wingo, Mason Smith have declared for the draft. You've lost all six. You've lost six guys. You've lost six interior defensive linemen. They are expecting Jacoby and Guillory to return for another year. Jalen Lee, who transferred in this past year from Florida, is back. And Paris Shand, who played both inside and out and can be versatile for you, is back. And then you have Sean Washington and the two freshmen, Dominic McKinley and Damarian Johnson. That's six. That's six, and two of them are true freshmen. One's a JUCO transfer. And one's kind of a tweener, end tackle. And the other two guys have just been rotational guys. When you talk about your roster, there are wants and needs and musts. Losing Jefferson, Smith, Wingo, Hill, Langston, West, you've lost six interior defensive linemen, including your three best guys. Defensive tackle is not a want. It is not a need. Defensive tackle in the portal right now is a must. Bold underscore 72 font must. You cannot, cannot go into the 2024 season without adding another body, a warm body on the interior defensive line. Or you find yourself in the same spot you were in when Mason Smith got hurt in 2022 and you were running a three-man rotation with Jaqueline Roy, Makai Wingo, and Jacoby and Guillory. And that ain't no way to live. So we'll see if LSU can convince Mason Smith or Makai Wingo to stay with the Bo Davis announcement. I would I do not think the odds are good of that, but we'll see. Either way, you have got to go add somebody out of the portal at defensive tackle. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.